What's up, y'all? It's Robicus, and welcome back to Dayton Dies. You know, the one that's not dead yet. Anyhow, y'all, today I'm going to be reading yet another creepypasta. Today I will be reading Don't Look Outside by user Sid Vicious. Estimated reading time, 10 minutes. Anyhow, guys, let's begin in 3, 2, 1. <laughs> I've been living in a fifth wheel on my recently purchased property. For those of you listening that don't know what a fifth wheel is, a fifth wheel is a mobile home slash trailer that attaches to a vehicle via a very round hitch. That hitch is what they call the fifth wheel. Um, It's the same kind of hitch you'd see on a semi pickup truck or as the Brits call it, a lorry. Anyhow guys, back to the story. The goal was to build a home on the two acres of land, but the weather didn't agree with that. I live in rural Nevada, and the weather conditions in winter can really throw a wrench in any construction plans you may have. Between the snow and the 50 mile per hour winds, winter just wasn't an optimal time to build. Nonetheless, I still have my fifth wheel and generator to keep me up and running through the cold months. It's pretty peaceful, actually. Between the howling wind and the rain on the tin-like roof, it's like my very own ASMR. That's usually how I fall asleep, listening to the therapeutic sounds of nature. Tonight is different. There was a mild case of wind and a light drizzle, but the quiet came before I could drift off. The sound of a herding dog who lives across the way is barking at what I assume is his flock of sheep. I toss and turn, but the incessant barking is refusing to let me rest. I'm irritated. I understand the dog is just doing his job, but in order for me to be on time for my job in the morning, I need to be able to sleep. The bark is hollow. There's a little urgency from the dog, and he sounds more like an old man coughing. It's a low wolf, and it happens every three seconds. I imagine him nipping at the heels, nudging the sheep into the direction they need to go. Eventually the barking seems to stop, and I'm able to doze off. When I wake, it is not from my alarm, unfortunately. The same old, tired, herding dog is barking again. I pick up my phone and see that it's 4am. Okay, well, I'd have to be up in an hour for work anyways, and trying to fall back asleep with the noise would be pointless. I get up and start to brew my coffee. I'm listening to the rhythm of the dog's bark. Wolf, 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 wolf. He sounds like he hates his job. Heh, <laughs> me too, bud. I turn on the TV and put on a comfort movie from Netflix to drown out the animal. As though he knows I've tuned him out, his barking picks up. I roll my eyes and curse to myself. This is starting to really get under my skin. I crack the window open and yell, SHUT UP, YOU BASTARD! Before I could shut the window, however, I notice something. It's something small, but nevertheless it's there. The dog sounds more urgent now. He seems alarmed, and instead of the usual cough-like wolf I was hearing, it sounds more like a panicked and biting bark. He's facing away from the flock, and I try to make out the image before me that is clouded by morning mist and lack of sunlight. In the field of uneven grass and strewn about feed, there's a figure. It's just crouched behind a half-eaten bale of hay. The dog and sheep are in the opposite far corner, clearly unsure about the shape that has entered their land. I try to force my eyes to focus, but between the bale of hay blocking it and a lack of proper sunlight, my eyes refuse to adjust. My heart pounds with anxiousness. Is this what the dog's been barking at? This person? Is it a person? It has to be. It has a round head and a long neck and shoulders as far as I can tell. That's a person, right? Before I can stare any longer, I close my window. I know farmers get up early, so maybe the shape I'm seeing is one of them just laying out the feed. Maybe their children saw me and crouched down to hide their embarrassment. I rationalize as much as I can. I sat still in the near silence, just convincing my mind that whatever it was, it was human. Maybe it's an intruder, 
And that's why the dog was so distraught. Should I call the police? But what if it was a farmer? Hmm. I decide I'm being too dramatic. I'm going to look again and make sure that what I saw was one of the people who owned the land. I refuse to allow my brain to get the better of me. I just really need to build my courage back up to crack the window and peek out. I'm ashamed to say that it has taken me what feels like an hour to gain the metal to look outside. <clears throat> I think what has helped me finally build said courage is the fact that the dog stopped barking. I know I should have done something before this point, but the comfort of knowing the dog no longer sees a threat is what pushed me to finally follow through. I slowly crack the window and look out. It's a little brighter now, with the sun pulling oranges and pinks into the sky. The field is empty. Thankfully, the only residents are the sheep who are now back at the center of the field and the dog. Good. Now I can go to work and forget that any of this happened. And that's exactly what I do. Work was boring, as work usually is. I hardly thought of the dog or the person I saw in the field. It's easy once time goes by to convince yourself of what actually happened. I looked out and saw a shape. That's all. No monster of the night, no killer waiting to ambush. I just saw a shape, and I'm not even sure if that's what I saw either. It could have been nothing. A shadow in the field? So that's what I'm going to go with. Nothing has happened. As I pull into my dirt driveway, I look across the field. I smile to myself, seeing the sheep graze the grass and the dog laying against the fence line peacefully. What a fool I've been. I'm a grown man and I allowed a little dog's bark to terrify me over essentially nothing. I go inside my trailer and make myself a pack of ramen for dinner and pair it with a glass of sweet tea. Oh, that is really southern, guys. If you guys are from Europe listening to this, this is something Americans do sometimes. Not a five-star meal, but really, it's all I have energy for after the lack of sleep I got last night. I eat my ramen, drink my tea, and watch my shows as the hours slip past me and the day creeps into night. I start to feel anxious. What will I do if I hear that barking again? What if they or it is out there again? I try to rationalize and laugh it off, but fear is stronger than logic, and as we descend into night, my mind descends into panic. I decided to sleep on the pull-out futon in the living room area of my fifth wheel. At least this way I'll have the illumination and sound from the TV to muffle any noises outside of my trailer. I make my bed and I turn on a TV show I've seen a thousand times. I allow myself to drift off. When I awake, I awake with panic. The kind of panic you get when you know someone is standing inches from your face. Watching. Waiting. The TV is timed out and the illumination the dim screen adds to the space is eerie. Oh yeah, this is back when, uh, when TVs would turn off. Like, it would still glow a little bit even though um, there was nothing projected from the TV. Um, that's analog horror for you right there, guy. <laughs> okay. Um, I sit up and I look around as my chest struggles for breath that somehow escapes me. I scan my head from the kitchen area back to the futon. Nothing. I relax a little, getting up to turn my show back on. As I do, I double check that my door is locked and all the windows are closed. I'm ashamed to admit that when checking the windows, I squint my eyes, avoiding any possibility of seeing something I would rather not see. As I check the last window next to the futon, something unfortunately catches my eye. It was quick and brief to the point that I wasn't even sure that it was even really there. But I think I saw something peek out at me from behind the tree in my yard. I didn't get a great look, but it seemed like whatever it was had an unnaturally round head and two glowing eyes. Oh crap, is this like aliens? I slammed the window cover down and lay back down. Chest once again heaving. I didn't see anything, I tell myself. Your mind plays tricks on you when you're already panicked. I do my best to focus on the TV, but like an itch in the back of my brain, I hear my own small panic voice. It's gotten closer. It's no longer across the street. It's here. For us. What does it want with me? Will it try to get in? 
The panic eventually subsides as I convince myself that what I saw was probably my own reflection or shadow. I decided that this is what it had to be. I don't look out to look again though to be sure. I just drift to sleep. Dreaming of glowing eyes and howling wind. When I wake, everything seems normal. I make myself a cup of coffee and a bagel. I go through the motions of preparing for my day. And when I get to work, I go through the motions of being an employee. I don't necessarily have a bad day, but it feels like I'm stuck on autopilot. I chalk it up to a lack of sleep. Today is Friday, which means I will be stuck at home for two days. I'm scared that without the distraction of work, I may go insane trying to ignore the glowing eyes that I keep trying to convince myself I don't see. I arrived home once again and put on some sweats. I turn on the TV and make a cup of hot tea. I don't eat dinner. My stomach turns as I feel like I'm waiting for the inevitable. My eyes dart around the trailer, waiting to see something move. My ears perk up with any hint of noise. <clears throat> Relaxation feels impossible. I don't even lay down. Instead, I sit at the edge of the futon and watch TV with wired bloodshot eyes. After about two hours of absolutely nothing, I decided I can lay back and relax, just a little. I don't decide on sleep as sleep isn't an option. Even if I was tired, which I'm not, the panic in my chest would refuse me any rest. It's about 2 a.m. when I hear it, a slight knock on my door. My eyes dart to the trailer door and lock in as if I'm trying to shoot lasers out of my eyes and into whatever is standing on the other side. I don't get up and open the door. I've seen enough horror movies to know what happens after that. I just sit and wait. You know, they say that, but like, I've never seen a horror movie where somebody answered the door and then they got got. You know what I'm saying? I have seen it where they answered the door, turned around and got got, but normally it's not right behind the door. Just saying. Um, <laughs> I just sit and wait. I hear another low, consistent tapping noise, this time coming from the window beside me. My head whips to the side as I jump off the couch. I just stand and stare, waiting for another tap, this time in threes. There's no mistaking the noise. It is as if someone is intentionally trying to gain my attention. I, I crouch down onto the floor holding my head in my hands. I want to scream. I want, to, I want it to leave me alone. But I don't want to acknowledge its existence. I start to chew my nails. This time it's coming from the door again, willing out any possibility that the tap on the window was a tree branch or something more logical than a creature of the night. The taps have turned into banging now, loud knocks that beg for me to open the door. I refuse. Then I hear something else. A giggle, low and almost like a gurgle. It sounds as if someone tried to laugh with a mouthful of water. At this point, I'm sweating and shaking. I can't help myself. I'm exhausted and terrified. I'm not thinking straight. Leave me alone! I scream. For a moment, nothing happens. It's quiet. Almost too quiet. I reach for my cell phone to call the police, but before I can, the trailer shakes. I squint my eyes shut as I hear the window cover roll up in a quick whip of motion. I can't look outside. I can't look outside. I can't look outside. I'm rocking back and forth, whispering a slurred reminder to myself. Minutes pass, and that's when temptation takes over. I don't know what it is about the human brain, but anytime you tell yourself you must not do something, the need to do the opposite overpowers your mind. Well, sometimes. <clears throat> I squint my eyes. I need to close the shades, I silently tell myself. But I needed to see. I needed to see if it was really there or if I was just going insane. I count to three and open my eyes. I almost scream at what appears before me, but nothing escapes my lips. Standing on the other side of my window is the most terrifying thing I have ever laid my eyes on. The head is so round and smooth. The eyes are so metallic yellow reflecting all light coming out of my trailer. Its skinny neck looks so unproportionate to the head it has to carry around. The nose is just a single U-shaped slit. The mouth though, oh my gosh, the mouth. It has three times the amount of normal teeth, all appearing human. 
Its smile is so wide that it takes up the majority of this thing's face. You can see every tooth from its smile alone. And it's just staring right at me, smiling. I don't move. I freeze like a deer in the headlights and can hear my brain screaming at my legs to move, to run, to do anything but stand there and let this thing see me. But it already has. It slowly leans its head forward. Before I have any time to react, it bangs its head against the window. Oh man, that's probably a pretty heavy head too. It does it again and again. It's trying to get in. The fear in my body finally turns to fight. I grab my old revolver from my TV stand and manage to load three bullets in. Without even thinking, I ran outside to face it. Leave me alone, I scream. It slowly turns away from the trailer and towards me, still smiling with the tar-like substance oozing from its forehead. I aim my weapon and pull the trigger, and it falls with a thud. Relief floods my body without hesitation. I squeeze the trigger two more times to be sure that thing is dead. I almost laugh to myself. It's done. It's finally done. I reach for my cell phone to call the police and let them know that I killed this thing on my property. As I stick my hand in my pocket, I soon realize I left my phone inside. I turn around to go back inside, but as I do, I see a bunch of tiny lights appear around my trailer. I start to walk forward, gun still in my hand, to see what these lights could be. As I approach them, I start to make out a very round head and a very tiny neck. These aren't lights. These are hundreds of reflective eyes staring back at me. I turn to run back to my front door but see that through the window, three of them are already in my home. They just stand there, smiling at me. I drop to my knees and feel something on my shoulder. I look to the side and see that it is a hand. A hand with long bony fingers and inch long nails. I know I can't run. I assume they are everywhere now. I feel the nails sink into my skin and I let out a cry. I really shouldn't have looked outside. Alright guys, um, so that was crazy. Um, so if any of you guys are the kind of people that like to I guess live outdoors in trailers because that's what it sounds like. Um, this one's probably kind of spooky for you. So I'm better be looking out for that boy Ram's hide. That's all I know. I hope you're all right, buddy, because this sounds like it's up your alley. So, um, I, I'm assuming these are supposed to be aliens. If not, whatever they are, are kind of freaky. Um, I, I didn't see any hint of a spaceship or anything though. So, um, maybe that's not what they're supposed to be. Anyhow, guys, I hope you guys enjoyed this one. Um, it was interesting, to say the least. Um, yeah, so thank you guys for having me again um, on Dayton Dies. Please a like and subscribe and leave a comment for your boy Dayton. He'd be putting in that work. Um, I think he just posted another video himself as uh, Dayton. Thank goodness he's back. And um, I guess I'll see you guys in the next one. Deuces.